Hey guys, Pogo here, and welcome to the very first week of Programming Problem of the Week. In this new series, we're going to take a look each week at a different, uh, you know, kind of programming problem. We're going to look at it and kind of decide how we could possibly solve it, and then we're going to actually go ahead and solve the question. This week's question comes from CodeLM 2015, which is a programming competition that I recently hosted at my school. Um, I wrote 15 questions that range from somewhat easy to pretty difficult, and uh, we're going to just take a look at one of them today. So the question for today is going to be question number 7, which is called Time Formatter. And it says, given a time in seconds, print a formatted time in hours, minutes, and seconds in the following format. It'll say number of hours, number of minutes, number of seconds, where each uh, pound sign is replaced by the number of that unit. So if there are two hours, it should say two hours. If a number is zero, then omit that unit. So if I only have a minute and a half, it shouldn't say zero hours. Um, and then ensure that the unit is singular, not plural. So if I have one hour, it shouldn't be one hours. Number 185 is 3 minutes, 5 seconds, because there are 0 hours, 3 minutes, and 5 seconds. So there's our problem. This is just a little, um, you know, problem to test your coding, see how good you are at it. And then you can look at some sample data. So given 90, it should say 1 minute, 30 seconds. Um, 3600 should say 1 hour. So that tells us there are 3600 seconds in an hour. 121 uh, should be 2 hours, 1 second, or 2 minutes, 1 second. And 3662 is one hour, one minute, two seconds, if I'm correct, which I believe I am. So, um, again, this came from a programming competition. Uh, so teams were, you know, given ten problems in about two hours to solve. Uh, so when you get a problem like this, you have to quickly think about how you could possibly solve it and then write some code and, you know, test it out. So the easiest way to solve this is to use uh, modulus and division and things like that. And I think that the, the first thing that we want to do is you want to count up the number of hours, the number of minutes, and the number of seconds, and then we have to worry about formatting it correctly into a string. And while we're doing this, I'm going to point out some of the mistakes that some of the teams made on this question uh, so that you can make sure that you avoid them. So uh, I have Eclipse open right here. I'm just going to make a new um, project. I'm going to call it Programming Problem of the Week. Um, and then in here, I'm going to call this Time Formatter. And I'm going to stick in my main method. So uh, the way that this is going to work uh, or the way that this worked in the competition is um, you would be given some sort of method header like public static string format in seconds and you'd have to fill that in and return a string um, which contains the the output one minute thirty seconds one hour whatever uh, and then in the main method it would actually be called so I'd print out format and I would give it some sample value like let's say ninety um, or thirty six sixty two so the first step to doing this is we're given the number of seconds. So if we get something like 3662, we need to figure out, um, let's first figure out how many hours, minutes, and seconds. So we're going to say, first I'm going to rename this to, um, let's just call it input, because I'm going to use the word seconds. So uh, hours is zero, minutes is zero, seconds is zero. And we're going to say while input is greater than 3600 hours plus plus um, and then input minus equals 3600 while input is greater than um, 60 60 seconds in a minute minutes plus plus uh, input minus equals 60 and while input is greater than 1 or rather 0 uh, seconds plus plus input minus minus or we can actually just say here um, seconds equals input because you know once we get chop off number of hours and minutes whatever is left is just seconds so first I'm just gonna have it return an empty string 
Um, but we want to just see if this actually works correctly. So we're going to print out the number of hours, the number of minutes, and the number of seconds. And then a new line just to separate them. So if I hit run, um, you'll see that we get and there we go alright so we ended up with uh, 0 1 30 and then 1 1 2 and if we look at this that's absolutely correct 90 is 1 minute 30 seconds um, so 0 hours 1 minute 30 seconds and then here again 1 hour 1 minute 2 seconds and let's just see one more time it's pretty fast um, you know it probably could be faster, I don't know, but, but it, it certainly works fine. Um, Alright, so we're good there. And then the empty line is just because we're returning an empty string. So, um, we're going to say here, uh, you could, let's, we'll just go ahead and use a string. Um, you usually want to use a string builder uh, when you're doing stuff like this, but, but we'll just keep it nice and simple. So we're going to say uh, if hours is greater than zero. So if there are some hours, if hours is one, then we're going to say output, we're going to add to it one hour. Uh, else, we're going to add to it um, hours, hours. So if we have some amount of hours, um, and if it's one, it's just going to be one hour, because we need to make sure that that's singular. Otherwise, we're going to just say however many hours it is, and then the word hours. Um, and then after each of these, we are going to put a space, because we're assuming that there will be some amount of minutes or some amount of seconds. Uh, and then we're going to essentially just copy this again. If minutes is greater than zero. If minutes is equal to one, then it should say one minute with the space. Otherwise, it should say however many minutes. And then finally, for seconds. So again, one second, um, oops, or um, however many seconds, seconds. And this will not have a space at the end. And you need to be careful when you're copying code, because if you miss one variable renaming, then you know it'll mess your entire thing up. But now we're just going to return output, and let's see what happens. Uh, first of all, we can we can remove that because we know that it is working. Uh, but you'll see we get one minute, thirty seconds. One hour, one minute, two seconds. So that wasn't all that hard. But there's one thing. This problem created a huge problem during the competition. Uh, because if you look at this, um, or actually, I guess you can't really see it here, but let's give, let's just use 3600 as an example. The problem was that, um, oh, uh, that's odd. Why is 3600 say 59 minutes and 60 seconds? That's a mistake. Okay, so um, clearly I think this needs to be equals. So yeah, there was one issue that we had. But the issue is that at the competition I used um, a an automatic system of grading. Uh, and then what was happening is, if you look at this, if I highlight it, it looks fine, but you'll see that there's that space after one hour. Because remember here I wrote one hour with a space. Uh, and the problem was the system was marking that wrong because it had a space in it. And, you know, that created a big issue for me. But what I was expecting the people to do is there's a handy little function inside of the string class, handy method in the string class called trim. And if I run this again, you'll see that we don't have that space anymore because what trim does is it will actually take any uh, white space in the beginning and the back. So you'll see any leading and trailing white space is removed from the string. Uh, so that would fix that issue. I ended up giving the team's points back for that, but technically they were wrong because they didn't trim the string correctly. So uh, that's all for this video. This was just a little programming puzzle that I wrote, uh, and then that's kind of how to solve it. We went about it, and it took us about, I'd say, five minutes to solve this puzzle. And that's really good, because a lot of teams at the competition had a lot of trouble with this problem. Um, but it wasn't too hard for us. So I hope you guys enjoy this series, and if you do, then next week I'll take a look at another problem and how to solve it uh, you know, quickly and so that it makes sense. I hope I explain this one well. If you're looking for programming puzzles in the meantime, uh, just head over to codingbat.com. Uh, this is one of my favorite websites personally. Um, 
And as you can see, I've actually completed most of the puzzles in both Java and Python. Uh, but if you go through, like in Java, uh, you'll see they have tons of different uh, puzzles across different things. You can start with the very simple sleep in function, uh, and then or method, sorry, and then move on to some harder things dealing with recursion, uh, which clearly are difficult for me, uh, and then other things. And there are, of course, Python problems as well. So if you're looking for a programming puzzle uh, between now and next week, check back here. Uh, but otherwise, I'll see you guys soon with some more programming. Bye for now.